Last week we did a top five in terms of the best field kicks in the game. This year, or this week I should say, all the gentlemen around this table have put together their top five decision makers. We are talking about the blokes in traffic that can just see everything. They've got great vision and they make the right decisions. And Rocket, I think you're going to kick it off. Yeah, first um, I've gone for, for Scott Pendlebury um, for five. Um, I've got Sam Mitchell, uh, or oh, one. <laughs> Sam Mitchell, two. Jim Bartell, three. Rioli, four. Ablett, five. But I think you throw a blanket. There's Watson, Joe. Yeah. Are about ten of them. Yeah. Uh, but the reason for Pendlebury, obviously seen firsthand, just his ability to make some great decisions in traffic. Mitchell, I think, is an absolute jet of that. Hands and feet. Yep. Way left and right. He's terrific. Jimmy Bartell, for me, just makes the right decision at the right time. Kicks the right goal. Um, knows when to put his body on the line, know when to mark, know when, knows when to receive. Now, I think we talk about decision-making as far as kicking handball on the ball, but he's yeah. got a great ability to make all-round decisions. Obviously, Cyril as well is fantastic. And, and that, you know, there's Judd and Watson, obviously, the next yeah. two as well. What, do you, what have you noticed about Pendlebury that surprised you since you crossed over to Collingwood? Uh, nothing's really surprised no. me. Um, I think it just reinforced, uh, I think, his professionalism. I mean, he does everything, everything possible to play well on the weekend. We'll yeah. get himself a chance to play well at the weekend. Uh, nothing tends to phase him. He's very calm. Um, whether he gets tagged or not get tagged, he's, uh, the, the, he's a terrific leader on the field. Um, yeah. But he's, he's uh, and, and I think we see it week in and week out, and I've certainly, no, I've certainly seen it in the past when I coached against him, his ability to make a decision with heavy traffic is just terrific. My top five boys, and we might have a look at mine. Mine's slightly different. I've probably gone for some key backs as well that I think make terrific decisions in terms of winning the ball back and be able to create off half back. I think Matty Scarlett understands the game and assesses the game really well from 80 metres away, 40 metres away, can negate his opponent and assist on others. So I think he's a terrific decision maker in a defensive sense. I think Sam Fisher the same. He's played that loose man role for a long time now and really understands the game. Surreal's vision for me, Penderbury the same. You just spoke about Penderbury. And Joe Watson, I think, is you know, one that we don't often talk about when we put these top fives together. But I just think he's such a complete player now. And his, his handball work, his ability to put players into space whilst he's still in that traffic, is uh, probably in, you know, right at the pointy end of the competition. I don't think we're going to have too many arguments no. with any of the names no. that we come up with. But it's interesting the, the angle that you took, talking about a couple of defenders, in particular key defenders. Uh, if you're going to take that angle, no room for Dustin Fletcher? Oh, look, they're very similar, but I think Scarlett's been the best at it for probably, you know, the same period of time. Head-to-head, head head, you could throw a, throw a coin yeah. up in the air, really. But I think Fisher and, and Scarlett get less credit for what they do in a defensive sense. Dustin, we, we talk about Dustin a fair bit, I, I think. Because yeah. uh, he's done it miss... for 37 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. well, if he does it for another 37, <laughs> I'll give him some more credit. <laughs> Sneak him into the top five. We better have a look at my top five. and I'm, I think I'm a little bit similar to Rocket with... Uh, I've gone number one, Scotty Pen Pendlebury, because of that uh, work in traffic just seems to do it so well with a lot of poise. Jimmy Bartell, a little bit on uh, Kingy's uh, philosophy and, uh, and uh, Rocket about, he, he just picks the right time to go back or make a move himself, whether it's forward or into the midfield, he just really assesses the game beautifully. Joe Watson, the way he's elevated himself with his hands, with his feet, with probably not being an elite kick but takes the right option. Chris Judd, probably more so with the way he mo carves his body through uh, traffic, so not so much with feet or hands but just gets through into space. And Gary Abbott because he just seems to uh, get to the right place all the time and does the right thing. So, I mean, he's a superstar. So, pretty self-explanatory, that group. But uh, Scotty Pendlebury, for me, is just in a massive player, seems to do it each and every time. Yeah. Now, I know you love to disagree with whatever yeah, I say, yeah. so um, give us a look I at your like top your, five. I like your top five, but I'll do mine. My right. top five is the right top five. It's the correct five. <laughs> is it all probably the best five. Uh, Scotty Pendlebury, and look, the top three you could have put in any order. It wouldn't have made any difference yeah. to me. But Scotty Pendlebury, I love the way he controls things through the middle of the ground. Watson and Mitchell, they're all the same. Those, those top three are the same type of players that dominate in the middle of the ground, use both sides of the body, hands and feet. They're brilliant. Rioli, to me, is a little bit different. He can get himself in, in the toughest of traffic. Yep. There can be no way out, and all of a sudden he appears at the other end. You think, how do you do that? Mm. I reckon if he's got one fault, it's being too unselfish. I think sometimes you'd like to see him perhaps finish the work himself instead of always bringing someone into it. But love the way he goes about it. And Nick Delceno, I think, is one of the forgotten yeah. players because... Maybe he hasn't been in as good a form as we've seen him at, at times, and St Kilda have been a little bit up and down. Yep. But he's a player that can, he, whenever he hits the ball, he's got time. Yep. And he looks at everything. And whilst he doesn't use the right foot too often, he doesn't need to.
and he hits the target. So, but as I said, you could throw a blanket over most of them, couldn't you? Chieftain, um, a man that hasn't played many minutes and I wanted in the top five but probably didn't qualify is uh, Luke Hodge. How do you see him as far as if he's out there and playing, where do you sit him, especially, I suppose, amongst yep. your other Hawthorne players there? Well, that's, that's the thing. He's probably out of sight, out of mind yep. because he's only played a couple of games this year. It was probably just a... A little bit um, ahead of time putting him in there, but he's brilliant. Yeah. He, he's, to me, he's your Jimmy Bartell type. He does say, what he, you need when it is. needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and makes the right decision with his body at the right time. Yeah. Sacrifice himself, but obviously makes the right kick as well. You can guarantee that all those players we've put up there, if they played for Richmond on the weekend, <laughs> yes. that last centre bounce is orchestrated perfectly <laughs> and they get the result. You guys played in a superpower team through a great era as well. Is there a uh, former teammate that stood out for you? Obviously you had a lot of great players, a lot of great decision makers, but is there one from the, the, from the mid-80s that stands out as, as a great thinker that stood up at the right time? Gee, where do I mean, you start? it's a hard one. Where Without do you start? notice. So. Look, Gary Ayres was that sort of player that could yeah. have an influence. Yeah. He, would, he would do what needed to be done yeah, at the time. Right, right. Uh, most of the time played deep in defence, but probably half a dozen rocket you could throw up. No, but, uh, and there was after me, but Darren Jarman was obviously a very good decision maker with yeah. the ball, but I think the Chieftain was on the end of a few of those kicks. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there was a... I made great decisions in making myself available yeah. for Jars <laughs> to kick <laughs> out some of the Now there's you know, players like Bacchanara, which is fantastic, yeah. about mm. to make good decisions at the right time. So there well, was quite a few. We had a lot of similar names in our top five there, but I think the one that probably got most of the top rankings was Scott Pendlebury. Yeah. And when you just have a look at some of the work that he does, he, he, he weighs it up. He could have kicked that, and then he thought, well, I can just, we can make a certainty of this by virtually running it in with a chain of hand passes. He just sees things beautifully. And another one that doesn't look an exceptionally quick player, but always has time. How is his speed, Rocket? I mean, he, he does look like he's, he's controlled. He's quicker than he looks. Yeah, okay. He is, because he does, look, he does look casual in his running, doesn't he? Yeah. But he's, I think it's just the way, I think, I think it's just his style of running. But it seems when he gets the ball that the game's in slow motion around him, doesn't it? It does. The thing with, with him is uh, that they put players into space. That's what I yeah. like. The, the, the actual next possession for the player that receives the ball off Penderbury has got a pretty simple task, hasn't he? Oh, that's right. Look he, at that. I mean, he, that. He just sees 360 degree. Mm. Yeah. They bring those around him into the game, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Which is absolutely brilliant. 